Hello to everybody, both virtually and physically, for the latest meeting of, and the very first time that we've been something as grand as an advisory committee. So this is the first meeting of the Neighbourhood Plan Advisory Committee. So welcome to you all. Um, do we have any apologies? I don't think we do, do we? No? No? And so moving on to item three, which is the co-option, um, I would like to propose from the chair to co-opt uh, Paul Foxley and Jerry Stanford. Paul Foxley just knew he's on cue, you see, he's a musician, and um, Kevin McNulty, because they've been with us since the beginning of our journey in 2016, is it now? An awful long time. Does anybody want to second me on that? A quick question. Do you actually co-opt councillors, or do you just co-opt non-councillors? Councillors can attend the meetings regardless of where they are. Okay. Oh, sorry. You've got, you got Kevin and Liz in that position, haven't we? I have. Yes, sorry, I ignored Liz. I'm so sorry, Liz. I didn't. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> right. Okay. I was focusing on the people who've been with us since the beginning of our journey, and so in that case, I would like to amend that to just co-opting um, Paul Foxley and Jerry Stanford. I'll second that. So can we have a vote on it, please? Okay, splendid. Welcome to you all. Um, just a, a sub-question, in case then uh, uh, my various conversations with Richard Thorley. Um, are you interested in perhaps joining us, Richard, or are you happy as a mere observer? Wait a second. No, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah, as an observer at the moment. Splendid. Um, yeah. No problem. Thank you. Okay, frequency of meetings. Well, we, we've got quite a few reports and things coming in now. So I think that we should actually um, set meetings as we approach uh, Regulation 15. Let's say once every four weeks. I'm looking at Gina. How does that suit you, Gina? Is yeah. that all right? Yeah, that should be fine. So um, if we can leave it that Gina um, sends out uh, some dates that's, that may suit us, perhaps a three dates, and, and we choose the best one for us, yeah? Okay. okay. Marvellous. Are there any declarations of interest? No. Public forum, which is something that's different from what's on the agenda? No. Um, so, moving on to item seven, which is, uh, he's, 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 he's number seven, land in front of Cone Grammar School, okay. I'm thinking, no, he's not, oh, oh, okay, all right, well, I, th I think we're going to roll six and seven together, but, but uh, the floor's yours, Richard. Okay, thanks very much, I keep having to press on mute, I keep being quietened, I think, <laughs> So yeah, thanks for letting me um, speak. I know we've had a few discussions on this before, but never in such a grand forum. I, I know there's 15 minutes, but trust me, it's going to be a lot briefer than that. So I do want to talk about the Farraford Road playing fields. Uh, we have provided evidence relating to this uh, sort of plot or these playing fields. When I say we, I mean the uh, the Barraford Road uh, Playing Fields Group, which is fully constituted. And to that end, we have demonstrated a demand for the use of the field. Um, we have produced evidence of the existing Section 106 that is in force and has been in force since uh, 2010. We have provided evidence that there was a material breach by Nelson and Cole College in its maintenance obligations that were contained in the existing Section 106. And yet in our opinion, um, we believe that the evidence that the college produced at the closed meeting on the 10th of March was a little bit disingenuous um, because the reduction in demand 
of the playing fields and the, the dampness of the playing fields, which is not in dispute, um, was as a result of their own breach of the section 106. So their breach led to the evidence that they supplied at that meeting, which is a, a tangled web. Uh, however, moving on, um, I am very pleased to hear that the Nelson & Con College were requested by Pendleborough Council officers to reinstigate the maintenance um, that is specifically outlined in the section 106. It is very detailed. Um, so they have been instructed to reinstigate it, which is great. We have had formal notification by Barrowford Celtic, the football club, uh, that they will commit to using the field when the section 106 maintenance obligations are put back in place. And we've also had um, advice by Colm Football Club that they will also use it. Um, that's only an email form at the moment. We're waiting for the formal letter, but they have committed. So in our group's opinion, uh, it should be designated as sports and recreation facilities in the neighbourhood plan. I think it's in CNDP 11, which would give it uh, the necessary protection. So moving uh, on, I, I don't want to dwell on the spinning. I just want to make sure it's on the table for another day. Um, but the spinny was originally in the same scope as the fields or the same land mass, uh, the same area, but it seems it may be treated as a separate land parcel. So with that in mind, we are mindful that further evidence will be needed uh, to be considered to how to finally designate that area um, if it is going to be treated separately to the playing fields. So you, you know, bear with us on that. Uh, we are working on it. There are tree preservation orders there, but as I say, I don't want to clog this session up on that aspect. We'll come back to that in a, uh, you know, a, a few days or a couple of weeks at the most. So, yeah, appreciate the time to speak. Um, we're, uh, we're just relying on the, uh, the advisory committee to do the right thing. Thank Thanks you very much, Richard. Thank you. Obviously, this has been uh, a confusing uh, time in that we, uh, when we uh, did our research, and I'm looking at Gina, uh, we asked around, we asked Pendle Borough Council whether the land was used for sports. We said, we heard, no, absolutely not. It's far too boggy. Da, 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 da. And we had never heard about this S106. As it transpired, no formal declaration was made by Pendle Council to uh, certainly there was no council involvement or even senior management involvement. They were just told informally, to, uh, they told Nelson and Cone College not to bother maintaining it. And obviously the result of that chicken and egg scenario, if you don't maintain sports fields, especially in the north of England on the Pennines, you tend to end up with a boggy mess. Um, 10 year olds, nine year olds, eight year olds vote with their feet and don't want the mummies don't want to wash the kit and being sexist there could be the daddies washing the kit um but in any case that led to that position so it was true that it wasn't used for sports but none of us knew why and we got to the bottom of it and actually i said to you earlier today it's actually really positive because the people of cone now have actually got a facility sporting facility that is maintained for primary school children um, so I think that we all can agree that it, it's something that would be designated within the sports section of the neighbourhood plan and the spinny, which has never been used for sports, um, it would be looked at separately at a later date. I'm looking at Michael Wellock. Uh, I'm imagining that he would agree with me on that point. Um. <clears throat> I think the spinny could be treated in two ways. One, as part of the, if you decide to keep with the 
CNDP 11 allocation, treat it as part of that, or it could be looked at separately. Um, I think in, in, in practical terms, the, the planning policy position probably wouldn't change. Um, in terms of the spinny, I think we'd have to look at just exactly how the boundary of what was drawn as CNDP 11 and what is shown on Pendle's local plan as OS081. So again, there may already be a, a protection there through the local plan, but I'd have to check that. I haven't got it in front of me. Well, rather than delay this meeting, which has an enormous agenda, I think we can put it to a vote to propose that we hear back from Michael on the exact position of the spinny in planning terms. But in the meantime, we look at the actual playing fields and designate them as playing fields, as we first did before we did our research as to whether they were used within the neighbourhood plan. Do I have a seconder for that? Brian? And so if I could put that to the vote. Chair, Chair just, just, just hang on a minute. Um, I think putting the blame on Pendle Council is a bit... Sorry, it's a bit naughty. Those fields, those playing fields, have been used as junior playing fields um, for infant and primary school children for at least 30 years um, because uh, my children played on them as playing fields and the reason they ended up is that a former councillor who's no longer on here um, thought it would be a good idea, I think, to put them in, which um, fortunately it's turned out that, that people are uh, much against it. And like um, was said, the college were being very disingenuous um, in their um, dismissal. Well, the, the college had been asked by Pendle Council... I not yeah, but to maintain when, the playing fields. When, when asked, they said it cost them about £2,500 a year out of their 30-odd million budget, and they were, they were claiming um, that that was a drain on... No, they didn't claim it. They, didn't they, claim they in, implied that it was um, a drain on their um, but they resources. Were not to that that £2,000 was not maintaining them for sports. That's the well, point. They were not maintained for sports and they could not be used for sports. Interrupting you when you were speaking, so please don't interrupt other people when, when they're speaking. I'm just merely correcting you. Well, I could have corrected you several times in what you said, but I didn't. Um, the fact is, a mistake has been made and that has been now rectified. The no. reason... The reason I think, um, was certain people in um, Pendle's Parks Department weren't that interested in using them as uh, playing fields, and, and that is regrettable. So hopefully we will now look forward to them being brought back to a reasonable standard uh, so that sports can take place on them. Although I think the actual uh, one particularly waterlogged place in front of um, the old school will be very difficult to drain properly but there is plenty of other land there that can be used and in fact the goalposts are still there. Alice. Um, well what I wanted to know is the designation that we're proposing. Are we proposing that it becomes a local green space? No. Or are we, no, I didn't think that that was the, the case. Okay, so we're just proposing that it becomes a recreation ground. That was what it was in the neighbourhood plan, yeah. if you remember, until we were told that the, the green space was, well, the, the playing fields were unplayable. Then we discovered they were unplayable due to lack of maintenance. So it's been a cart and a horse situation. We didn't know that they weren't being maintained. We thought they were yeah, unplayable. That, that's clarifying yeah. it. Chair, could I... Could I um, this, Brian is uh, next, Paul, and then I'll, I'll call you. Right. Can, can I just clarify? I, I, I'm not quite sure how this works in terms of um, 
requesting to speak because obviously, unlike Teams, there's no put, thing to put your hand up. Okay. So I'm what's sorry. The protocol? I swivel my eyes a lot to look for you. But if I'll, I'll call Brian next and then you. That's fine. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Oh, is there? Press reactions. Okay. Raise hands. There you go. Oh, I think you can just do thumbs up and, and smiley faces. Anyway, never mind. Brian. If anyone would like to do that virtually, I can I'll keep looking at you. Oh, yes. Oh, I see. Paul's found his raised hand. If, if Com Football Club do get permission or they do, once they do start developing their pitches, I think there will be building on some of the junior pitches that are used now. So, Mr. Is it Richard? Thorley, yeah. Mr. Thorley, that said he had an email from them. I think that there would be some uh, use by Con Football Club juniors to use that pitch anyway, so they would get used. I think the, the, the point was that people had complained. I mean, Gina and I found this. People had complained that they'd played it once and they were never playing it again because it was a mud bath. Um, and so hopefully, I am hopeful that there is apparently this incredibly detailed laying of sand, aeration of ground details that is laid out in this S106. And now Nelson Cone College have been asked to do all of that. So that should solve the blood bar, the blood bar, the mud bath issue. I, I did attend that school. And I know how muddy it is, but I have seen teams, uh, clubs play there in the past, perhaps not in the last 10 years, but I didn't know it could stop, but I have seen them playing there in the past, so it is feasible that they can play, as I would say, maybe further over outside of the money area. I, I can say we didn't just take um, Pendle Council's word for it, we did ask around in the community and ask different clubs, and they all said no, they wouldn't play that ground. So, anyway, Paul. Thank you, oh. Chair. Sorry. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask um, for clarification. Um, Howard um, made reference to a previous councillor who had proposed the uh, development of that site. I was just curious as to who he was referring to. Councillor Cooney. Thank you. And Richard, you had your hand up. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, the, I don't want to sort of perpetuate this uh, because I think we know where we want to end up, but a few factual points I would make. The last game that was played out here was in September, 2019. That was the last formal booking made on the Parks Department website. Um, it wasn't 10 years ago or anything like that. The maintenance stopped around 2012. And obviously it deteriorated over the years. And yeah, if you go out on it now, it's fine. But obviously you don't play football in the summer. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, we can all play the blame game till we're blue in the face because a lot, a, a, even a few things in the last few minutes that I've said are, are not, not quite accurate. Um, and there is a lot of history here, but I think we have to sort of move on from the blame game. Yeah, what we want here is a facility for the community, um, not, you know, an area of land that councillors and public and sports teams argue over. We just want a facility that's there for the community. And we have a road forward here that we can get there. Um, and I think that the point on the green space, um, I think I understand the, the point there, but I think if the beauty of having it as a sport and recreation facility with the section 106 means it has to be maintained as such. So I think that would become a great facility for the community, particularly when the constituted group have got a few ideas 
of how to further promote its use, maybe with a couple of annual events to, to really bring the community together. Um, so I think you know, we need to get to the end game sooner rather than later. Okay, so we were part way through a vote that had been proposed and seconded. So all those in favour? Jolly good, that's carried. Thank you, Richard. You are really welcome to stay and listen to the rest of it. And I know you have a great interest in the neighbourhood plan. I don't know whether it extends to staying for the rest of the meeting. Um, so moving on to item eight and Jenny Wayne and her excellent, um, Gina and I were so thrilled with your long range views analysis. But I realised after Councillor Hurley had put forward her thoughts that I really, um, though I think Councillor Hurley this was on the design, I realised that I don't know my left and my right and I also don't know my east and my west. So I really appreciate the scrutiny of other councillors who think this through and think, wait a minute, is Pendle, wait a minute, where is it? So I really appreciate that. Do anybody else have any uh, feedback on the uh, long range views analysis? Howard? Yeah, there are um, one or two inaccuracies in the, um, not, not um, compass points, but in, in the streets that it mentions. Now on, page nine of the um, document, the uh, viewpoint three and viewpoint four. Viewpoint three is not Spring Lane, it's Hall Street. And you, in fact- on, Are you managing to keep up with this, Jenny? And, and obviously- Yeah, I, I've, I've got the document in front of me so I can make notes as we go. So thank you very much. Yes. Gina was taking notes as well. Oh, okay. And it, 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 on the- appendix of just the photographs it, it, it's actually correct I think it says Hall Street viewpoint four um, I'm pretty sure that's Spring Lane and not Linden Road because Linden Road's flat yeah um, Spring Lane's higher up the hill now Spring Lane is pardon yeah, Spring Lane is not, that's not Spring Lane because that's going the wrong way. That's Hall Street. That, Thank you. My, my photography skills of photographing the street and then photographing the name of the street obviously failed me. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's not far from Norway House. In fact, the, the building that you can just see on the right in there next to the 20 mile an hour sign used to be the, um, well, going back lots of years, it was the school clinic. Um, but he's now a, a spa and what have you. Um, and the other one is, is Spring Lane. It's not Linden. It says it's Linden Road, mm -hmm. but it's Spring Lane. Um, let's find the other ones. And on that page as well, viewpoint one should actually say viewpoint 19. So I have picked up on some inaccuracies myself today as well. Didn't hear a word of that because she, she you picked went... up on point 19 herself um, where there was an error, but there was uh, interference. Does anybody else have any? Well, oh. it refers to Alkincourt's wood. It's, it's wood. It's the woodland, woodland and nature reserve. Woodland and nature reserve. I thought there was another one where it was actually the wrong street. I may be wrong. Okay, Jonathan. Um, viewpoint two is just Exchange Street. It mentions Town Hall, but I, I wouldn't put Town Hall into it. Oh, I thought, I thought that was where it was taken from. It, yeah, it was taken from the town. Oh, oh, does it mean it's taken from the Town Hall, looking down Exchange Street? Yeah. Is that what it means? Yes, that's what it means. But I can right. make things clearer. Okay. Sorry. That um, bit on on page thirty one. Um, the significant views for mapping in historic cone it ought to mention spring lane because those cottages down spring lane are back to back ancient mm. <laughs> if, well i don't think i'm trying to think that there's still one or two that are back to back oh there are yeah they're in uh, our they're in our plan um but a lot have been knocked through 
and in the bottom house this, the, there used to be a big well in the cellar Alice um, yeah I was getting a little bit confused of where um, you were standing and what you were looking at so if that can be made just a slightly bit clearer so yeah. that um, <laughs> my understanding can uh, get to grips with that um, uh, I just was going to mention some minor points. On view one, there's a lot of street furniture uh, in the way of that view. And it would, might be better when the flowers are planted as well. You've got a tower there. And I just thought that perhaps we could just tweak that a little well, bit. Well, I think we'd have to take the picture, Alice. Yes. I don't know whether you're volunteering. I can take Excellent. a picture. Yes, Excellent. yes, yeah. So um, if, if you yeah. take the picture... Um, because, of course, Jenny is not here, so she can't easily take the picture. No, no. And then send the caption picture to Gina and to Jenny. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they'd be very grateful uh, if that's considered to be an improvement. Yeah. And also on page nine, there's one with a big yellow van. Um, and I thought, well, it'd be nice just to get that removed. If you, if you yeah. think we can beef that up. Yeah, I can do that. That's all right, Jenny. It's absolutely fine. It was a busy day. I stood in front of some streets for five minutes waiting for the traffic to get. <laughs> I can understand. Yeah, that would be that would be fine. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other thoughts? Thoughts? Yeah, Jonathan. So just just to be clear, this document uh, was obviously um, put together quite a while ago in terms of the neighbourhood plan. The 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 reference number for the neighbourhood plan, but then a few months ago there was a, a course of emails asking for further recommendations or further inclusions. Yeah, and I included those, the ones that, because you missed that first meeting, didn't you? Yeah. And then you suggested some other places and I found them and dropped pins on on Google Maps. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so basically they are now reflected in this document, uh -huh. aren't they? Yes, so yes. I think we've done quite a good job in capturing everything we can really. I think it really shows how complicated, although you look at Cone and you see it's a town on a ridge with bits that slope down, there were real surprises to me about what you could see from where. And in our neighbourhood plan, it to me showed that we as amateurs talked about views that were important, but were not able to encapsulate them and clearly define them as well as a professional person. Right, okay. Jerry. Thank you, Sarah, uh, Chairman. Um, the picture on uh, number, where was it? 10 mentions cone in the uh, blurb, but in fact, you can't see cone from there. It's just out of picture. That's number hey, you're 10. Coming. That's Irwin's looking at. You can't actually quite see Cone. Can you tell me what page you're referring to? Um, this is uh, picture 10 from the, hang on, the uh, uh, views assessment. Are you in the annex? There's Noina Rocks, Pendle Hill, Blacko Hill and Cone. Right, got you, okay. The Cone bit, sorry, <laughs> can't see it there. And... Um, most Coners would talk of Black O Tower rather than Black O Hill. It, it, it's a moot point. It's on the Ordnance Survey as Black O Hill. And it's correct to say Black O Hill, but that is a moot point there. Most so I was, I was following through the text of the policies. Absolutely right, Jenny. Yeah. Absolutely right. I was just mentioning it. And I agree with Howard about Alkincote's... Um, Nature reserve is probably the most important bit. Okay. The where we have Alkincoats wood, it's Alkincoats nature reserve and woodland, and I used to live there. And the other one that I picked up, um, picture nineteen. If you could find nineteen. Hang on, I'm just going down to it. Is uh, now that I think is taken from the railway sidings, and it says it's from Privet School. Now, Privet School is further to the um, west from there, 
So viewpoint 19 is definitely taken from in front of the primary school. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. It definitely didn't go to any railway sidings. It was on the main road into Colm, just in front of the primary yeah. school. Can't remember the name of the road. Yeah. Burnley Road. That's Burnley Road across the bottom, and that's the uh, that's the snooker hall facing us. The old if snooker. Was, club. If it was done in winter, which they look or it was May, early May. Yeah. Well, there weren't many leaves on the trees, so from <laughs> from the road in front there, you'd you'd get that, or a step ladder, or yeah, in the so long said, That image is zoomed in. Yeah. yeah. Thought so. Yeah, which is why it looks like it's so. I could actually change that for the image that gives you, if you were stood there, what you'd actually really see. Mm. That's what I should. That's that's the focal length I should really include. Okay. There's another interesting thing on that point is that the viaduct is shown, which is one of the iconic bits of Combe, and hasn't appeared on any of our views other than this one. Ah. Might be worth mentioning. I'll is make a reference to the viaduct, yeah. yeah. It's true, it's a grade two listed structure and you yeah. can see it in a lot of places. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, yes, it's in there. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Just the rugby, I think this question of club, I think possibly it, it should Hold house slash rugby club because okay. some of them, I've, 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 <coughs> but there's one that shows the, the the football post rather than a rugby post, which is obviously from old house. You go near an Alking coats, it's nearer the rugby club. So I think. So these two are two sporting facilities that are right next to each other, um, and uh, so Holt House would have been to my. It, right, the football pitch would have been in front to the left and the rugby pitches would have been behind. Does that sound right? Yes. Yeah, so when you, when you, the corner when you, of the road opposite Holt House and by the football pitches with the rugby pitches behind me. Okay, so we just need to clarify exactly where I'm referring to those photographs then. Yeah. Yeah. Does that sound okay? Basically, when you come up the, the track to it, the rugby club and the... Um, changing rooms are on your left and so that's the rugby club and then everything to the right is Hold House. It's all referred to as Hold House. I mean, it is locally but yeah. you know we don't yes the point about this is we've been too vague we rightly got criticism for being too vague and we don't want to be vague anymore so Liz were you stretching or were you waving at me? No you were stretching <laughs> okay um, so is everybody else happy with that, those small tweaks, so we can bring that back in a month and hopefully, uh, if you could give it to us in two weeks time, then we have plenty of time to digest it and read it and we can come back to you and perhaps we're fully happy or perhaps we'll just have a sudden revelation like we've missed off the Primit uh, viaduct or something, I don't know, we might have a revelation, I hope not. We have tried to give this thought. So, yeah, no, that, the time scale is absolutely fine. I'll get something to you by the end of this week. Um, would you like me to add a summary into the document? Because at the moment it's just the introduction and conclusions. I didn't want to write a summary until I knew that you were, you know, 95% happy with what it was saying, because then I'd just be doing is that, this. Is, is that a usual thing? Or would we expect people to really, we're talking about, we're giving these people detail, aren't we? We're giving them detail. And if we give them a summary, are we in danger of removing the detail and just creating something people can skim read? It would I be just in the document, so it would just be the first page, but be like your executive summary and then straight into your introduction. So it wouldn't be standalone, so they'd have everything. Um, is it not to, I, I won't make work for myself. Is that a standard practice? I mean, I, it I look is, at it is for me, yeah, it is for me. I like to have a summary because it just means that if you want somebody to read the most important bit, you've got one side of A4 to give them and you know that they should have the time to read that. And then Michael, you should dig in. Michael, are you happy with that? 
Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Our clerk is... Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, I have no problem with that. It's okay. generally fairly standard practice for a technical report to have an executive summary. Yeah. Right, super. Um, the, the final question that I had was, obviously, what I've done is given you a table of the places where views could be mapped. Would you like me to create that map with the arrows showing the directions of the significant views from each of those new points? That sounds very helpful to me. Yeah, because I did it again. I didn't want to do it if I hadn't got the viewpoints quite right for you. But if we're, yeah. you think we're in the right place, I'll do that as well. Excellent. I think that would be a very, very interesting. Oh, has, has Michael raised his hand? Oh. Yeah, I, ju I just think um, in terms of that map, um, one thing I think it would be um, useful to do would be, if possible, to sort of give a sort of diagrammatic of what the field of view is. Um, doesn't have to be, you know, 100% accurate, but I just think in terms of then transposing what's in your technical report into the neighborhood plan policies map, it's generally standard practice and examiners like to see a sort of representation of the field of view. Um, and on, a sort of again a sort of techie point um examiners um tend not to be too keen on views that stray beyond the neighborhood area um because you can't set planning policy for another adjoining neighborhood area now obviously with a view to a degree that is almost becomes a nonsense um you know that you can protect the boundary the, a view up to a line so I think it being useful if that map could just at least show a diagrammatic of what the field of view is, if that's possible. Michael, can I give you a call tomorrow so we can chat through that in a bit more detail so I can understand exactly what you're talking about rather than taking up the meeting now to do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I can probably send you um, examples that have been from elsewhere, the sort of map I'm talking about. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. I think, I think the problem is, Michael, I totally get that we don't own Pendle Hill in Cone. It's not our thing. Um, but there again, it is so important for so far around us. And the topography of this area means that the views are long range. And they are outside this town. A lot of them, the most important views. It's a very difficult one to, to fit in with the fact that we only plan for Cone. It, it, it's all about the setting of coal, and that is standard practice to be able to refer to the setting of an area. Um, so I think that's that's why I structured it in the way that I did, that there's the immediate setting, those places very close to, and then longer distance ones, which are like Black Oak Tower and, and Pendle Hill. Because it's not about, it's about something happening within the town that affects that long distance view. Yeah. Splendid. Well, that's exactly what we wanted. Um, and thank you so much. We look forward to seeing the next, the next, oh, yes, sorry, sorry. Oh, right. So it's B-U-R-W-A-I-N. Oh, I spelled Lake Berwain wrong. Apologies. All of this is much appreciated. It just goes back to me not being a local lass. I'm really sorry, <laughs> but thank you. The photographs in the appendix, do they go with the document or are they just... They go with the document, I'm thinking. Jenny? Sorry, I didn't hear the question. The photographs with the appendix go yeah, with... They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're part of the document, but I think they maybe I'll have to try and find a way to compress it all so it can sit in a single document. There are more errors on that. I'll, I'll list them out and, and... Okay, and share with Gina. E email them to Gina tomorrow. Okay, if that could be done relatively swiftly so that Jenny yeah, can could, make her first thing in the morning. changes. That's superb. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. And um, thank you, Jenny, for your work. Very You're complicated. Yeah. It's a pleasure, and I'll crack on with that this week and get something to you well in, in good time for your next meeting. 
Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So, um, Gina and Naomi, we are expecting um, Wei to come from the design code, but I see he's not here. So, shall we? I saw correspondence between Gina and him that you'd be ringing him, Gina. I have already texted him. Ah, I think you need no. to ring him. You know, um, he's probably eating a boiled egg or something, hasn't noticed. <laughs> um, so, but I'm quite happy to move on to the very next bit. So we'll, we'll, we'll go on to the marketing prospectus. So what you've been sent there, I'm afraid, and I must apologize, it's an old version, but it's just to give you the general idea. So it has moved on quite significantly. And there is a reason why you don't have the finished version, which is that we were given brilliant visualizations from Pearl of the potential for the top of Market Street. Um, it's not something that definitely is going to happen. It's not something that's definitely funded. But the worst bit of cone um, around Parliament Street and the market and so on could potentially be reimagined and reimagined really beautifully, looking at the sort of vernacular architecture of the town, but with a little bit of a modern twist. Um, to make sure that we still have an indoor market, which is so important, and we still have parking, which is so important. And it's a really exciting scheme. So I was really pleased that Pearl allowed us to, and I'm sure it would be changed ultimately if it came to a planning application, but they allowed us to use these beautiful images in our um, marketing prospectus. However, Pendle Council, in its wisdom, said, you might frighten the people of Cone with these beautiful images. I think we would make our, their hearts sing for joy with these images, but they say that people would become concerned if they saw that we were considering improving the town, investing in the town. Nobody's saying that it's going to be any particular time. Grants have been applied for. They may not succeed. We don't know, nor would, would we be suggesting that in the marketing prospectus. So sadly, we've got to find another image to use uh, instead of that visualization that, that suggests something future forward that is not there now, but promising for an improvement on cone. Worst case scenario is that we use the development next to the red line, which of course is just being finished. But I see that Paul had his ha has his hand up, so perhaps he's got something to, to help us with. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yes, um, I, th I think Kendall. Uh, sorry, I think Pendle have a, a point with that. Um, the view that uh, you could you could uh, set hairs running. Um, in in hindsight, I know we've discussed this before, but I think um, the you know the, the sort of proper process for any. Um, major development proposal like that should in, inevitably or, or um, certainly preferably <laughs> um, involve consultation at a, at a public consultation at an early stage. Um, and I think there is a danger that it could be read that it's sort of being, that it's something that's more real than we know it is um, in terms of um, you know, that there being an attempt to railroad something through with no consultation. So, so that would be my view that I, th I think Pendle have a point um, on balance. Um, I have to say, <laughs> um, I have some issues with the outcome of the um, the old health centre um, development, um, which is particularly disappointing, having been. A board member on, on uh, of Pearl, um, what during its uh, inception and, and development, um, but the way it's turned out is, frankly, pretty shoddy, and I'm, that's an issue that I'm going to be trying to raise at a later date, but um, in another forum. But um, the um, what I refer to there, by the way, is the quality of detailing. It's it's been dumbed down to the point that it's a, it's an awful pastiche instead of 
something with any real um, integrity, frankly. Um, so I'm not sure that I would suggest that you use that as an alternative. Um, the way that the, the draft reads of this document at the moment, I'm not even sure that it lacks um, anything great in terms of um, sort of architectural imagery. Um, the, it's got the Harris, Harrison Drive development there, which is something that is real, is happening. Um, it's been through the processes and people can identify with that as they will. But um, yeah, it would be nice to have something in the town centre, um, but I'm just not entirely sure um, that, that there's anything that would be suitable. Anyway, that's that's my view for what it's Thank worth. Thank you. I think no. I, th I think you do have a point, but you know, I, I offered a series of different captions to say that this was nothing more than a potential opportunity. It's not a planning application. It's not a detail thing. It's just a sort of visualize it. It's not the detail. <laughs> um, the 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 prospectus, even without that image, looks significantly better and more professional than the version that you've seen. Again, I'm looking at Gina, who has seen it, and we both agree that we want to come and live in Cone after having seen that prospectus, um, if we didn't already live in Cone. Um, I think it does do what we want it to do. With regard to the former health centre, which must have another name that's not the former health centre. Oh, right, okay. Um, I'm disappointed by the windows. They were meant to be low profile and set back and they are thick and chunky and set forward. And of course, the first floor and the second floor are the same size, which was something that was discussed at the time, that that top floor should have smaller windows than the first floor. Um, but I think overall, the dread phrase that I'm looking at you, Paul, uh, which is they say, is it an improvement on what was there before? Barlow, yes, it is. Uh, and of course, it does bring people to come and live in the town centre, which is something that the neighbourhood plan seeks to do. Alice. Um, I think without the actual document that we're supposed to have, it's very difficult, really, to discuss that now. And I propose that we... we I think I think the point is, Alice, now you've just seen what it an earlier iteration looked like. We'll remove that image that we're not allowed to use from the current iteration. And by the next meeting or in a couple of weeks from this meeting, you will see the latest position. And we have approval to use all of those images apart from that one. Howard. Can I just say that the... Well, that's a, it's a marketing thing. Well, <laughs> I, it might be a marketing thing, but I think it's marketing the wrong thing. We're, we're not cloth caps and shawls. Let's, you know, let's get in the 21st century, are we? Are we? Yes. Okay, Alice. It's... Um, I just thought that a picture of a bed and saying this is cone. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure that the uh, illustrations do reflect our town. We've got a lovely picture of um, aspirational house, perhaps, but we've got none of our buildings that show that we are an industrial I think heritage. the later yes. version, which shows some more that, terrace that, streets. Yeah, I think that's what I need to see. Yeah, we yeah. were waiting for some really good terrace streets, and mm. we were waiting for them not to be parked up with cars. Yeah. And that's in that later version. Yeah, I think so. That that's what I'm looking for. Oh, super. Okay, well, that, that's actually... Did you have any other thoughts on the prospectus? No? Oh, sorry. Chair, I haven't, I've not actually seen the photograph everyone's talking about because when I've been sent in the post, perhaps has had it removed. Yeah, exactly. You haven't seen the picture. Only Gina and I have seen the picture. Oh, right. It's a lovely picture, but we're not allowed to use it. <laughs> well, I totally agree with Howard. <laughs> um, 
let's make us sound a more professional town okay. in the 21st century. It's something that's meant to be memorable, and our graphic designer sort of wanted to use that to give it sort of a cohesiveness. Can I ask where, he, where they come from? Trawden. Oh, well, that explains it. <laughs> They've only just got electricity in Trawden. No, I bet he wasn't born and bred in Trawden. She? Was she? <laughs> yes, she was. <laughs> well, can we just count it as constructive criticism stroke feedback? You then, can, please? you can. Naomi, can, did you have a point to make on that? Okay. okay. Could I ask the other co-optees what they think of the sort of styles, dialect um, titles? Yeah, I'm afraid I agree with Howard. Okay. The, uh, it, the, the imposition of... Um, to this oh. and to that and gives the wrong impression for today's comb. Okay. Uh, I grew up here for goodness sake and we didn't use it then very ah. much. And it's upon the, Bonnie Kona, upon the hill, not on the hill, please. <laughs> okay, Tina's taking all of this down as feedback. We'll be very kind to this lady. Because she's worked very hard for a very low fee for us. Um, are there any other sort of stylistic or wordy thoughts that people have? No? Okay. So that's splendid. So we finished, them, we finished item 10, um, the cone marketing prospectus, and you'll see the next iteration very soon. And we're going back in time to item 9, and we're welcoming Wei, um, who is putting together our cone design code. And thank you to the people who've put their input in. I did my best with the captions of the, of the various pictures. Yeah. Uh, but I point out to you that I'm no Kona. Um, I am what's known in this area an off Cumden. Um, and um, Liz pointed out all kinds of things to do with spatial reasoning, which I was impressed by. Um, so I didn't really have any other responses, Gina? Um, no, um, just um, what Liz has sent. Yeah, so just to make it really plain, this, this document as it stands is not the document, how it'll be, it's just the structure of the document. Yeah. So everything will hang off this document and the detail has not been put in. Wei, would you like to sort of introduce it, talk a bit more about it? Uh, yes, I think um, I agree with um, uh, with you what you said um, about. Um, I think so far we sent over two versions of doc documents. Have you received them? Both of them. I think the first one is, uh, as you said, <clears throat> excuse me, is the skeleton of the of the report, and um, shows the the content, the structure of. And the probably the, the the draft layout of the pages, how the report going to uh, look like, what kind of content going to be included in the this in this design code report, um, and then the second one um, is about uh, the baseline information, what we're going to include uh, in the um, first half not half, first part of the of the design code to um, demonstrate how we understand and study the, the area, including um, the planning context, the urban structure, the building materials, the evolution of the area, the landscape, and the the flood area, etc. All of these um, uh, baseline aspects which could affect um, the design quality in the future. We, we include all of these aspects in the baseline. Uh, but of course, um, because of the line limited, it's, it will be a, a high level rather than detail level, which is uh, um, used for individual um, developing the project, that level will be more, much, much more detailed. But uh, for all of the um, neighborhood um, plan 
and supporting document like this, like design code will be high level because it's cover so so big areas won't be detailed and uh, it will uh, allow uh, flexibility for future and confirmation and uh, uh, further development. Okay, so from a time frame perspective, when do you move on? I know that you were hoping to visit with the heritage yeah. expert. Um, and obviously, to get that detail in, that visit has to take place. I'm sure that several of us will be happy to make ourselves available to give you a bit of a tour of the different, what we perceive to be the different zo architectural zones of the of the town, mm. whether it's the historic core, whether it's the suburban area, or whether it's rural. And the suburban area and the rural, even that uh, can be very different. Uh, yes, yes, and um, as that 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 is what I'm thinking actually at the moment, and um, because uh, we have um, a high level um, general operation of the area, uh, as far as you know, uh, up to date, I think. And the next stage, as you said, um, I need to go to the go to the area, ideally uh, with someone from local, and show show me um, what what are a different character uh, of the area, and that will help us to build up or identify uh, different uh, focus areas or character areas, which we're going to include in this uh, design code report. And then later we will have design codes applied to each um, focus area. And in, in terms of time, I, I would I would expect in probably later this month or early August, later this month, um uh, we prefer a better weather of course or, you know uh, we'll have a, a better well, you've, missed, you've missed summer in cone that's been that's gone um summer in cone only is of two days in may and six days in june and then it's over <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Love, but it'll rain on you <laughs> right um and is, I mean, I'm just, as I said, probably I'm, I'm thinking of um, the work commencing 26 July or 2nd of August. That, Have a look. Uh, any, any day of that, um, I, can, I can come to Combe uh, and probably ideally probably walk around uh, in the town centre um and maybe i, I, I don't know i, I know the, the the area is big and for the wider area if necessary uh we can go to you know the the wider area together um you can show me some other important um area you want you want to show me and uh, so maybe combined with the w walking around and the drive 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 around and I might point out to everybody else that we've had an extensive hour and a half virtual drive around, haven't we? Using the brilliance that is Street View, um, stopping and looking at various places, um, both in the centre and on the periphery. So that has informed the work so far. It's amazing what you could do 10 years ago. You wouldn't have been able to, to do that at all. Um, several of times we were driving and Wade was going, oh, no, that's a disaster. And it was quite a new <laughs> a new thing. Oh, you know, this is what this design code is intended to stop, to make sure that we have the right designs going in the right places. Um, just looking at my diary, I'm entirely free on the 29th of July. Um, I don't know whether that helps. Are you coming for one day or more? I think it will be one day, and um, I'm, I'm I'm living in Manchester. It's, it's not far. It's too, not not too far. Okay. Um, so twenty nine. What about the next week? The twenty nine is my birthday, so I'm probably. Uh, oh no! Oh dear! Oh dear! <laughs> um, oh, the thirtieth. The thirtieth is also free for me. Thirty. Um, I'm not working at um. 30s if um maybe i can swap day maybe 30s up maybe okay 30s yeah um yeah okay should we have a fallback position in case you consider consider it again uh let me um in which case i'd be looking at 
Tuesday the 3rd as my next free day. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, let's go for th uh, Tuesday of third. So Tuesday of third. Probably tu tu Tuesday of third is safer. Okay, um, it's not all right then. Yeah, let's pencil that. <clears throat> and yeah, probably um, apart from that, so um, can I just ask, um, take this opportunity to ask, in terms of the, the report structure, are you generally happy with the structure and the approach or do you have any questions or, because uh, I want to take this, this you know, opportunity to, to, to answer your questions on some, you know, key issues or anything you, you're not quite sure what we are doing. Michael, do you have any thoughts? Um, the structure, I, I've seen other ACOM design code reports, so I've no, I've, I've no issues with that. It's, to, it's, it's a fairly standard structure that they've used elsewhere, um, yeah. and, and, and it produces the results. I'm not sure this is a question for way, really. I, I think it's for the wider group. I'm still not clear what you want the relationship to be between the design code and the neighbourhood plan. Um, you know, I, I've, I've worked on other neighbourhood plans and, and, and broadly the relationship between the neighbourhood plan and the design code is probably one of two different routes. Route one, you could include the design code as an appendix within the neighbourhood plan itself. Route two, you would have the design code as a separate document that may well cross, be cross-referenced with the neighbourhood plan, but has some status as a supplementary planning document. I think the key difference is that if you go down route two, you do need some buy-in from Pendle Borough Council because to make it a supple supplementary planning document, they would have to have quite a heavy involvement. So I'm not, I'm not saying you have to make a decision on that now, but I do think that relationship needs clarifying at some point. And the final point I'd say on that is that depending on which route you go down, that could have implications for the neighbourhood plan timetabling. Well, Pendle Council has just started master planning Cone and Barn Oldswick. Um, and they have said that what they will do is, is pay a lot of attention to the work that's been done within the neighbourhood plan. Whereas with Barn Oldswick, they're starting with a clean sheet of paper. They've already master planned uh, Briarfield and they've already master planned Nelson. However, I don't think that we do want to delay. And I've had, and Gina has seen, uh, an email from Michael Kennedy at Pendle Council who wanted to understand the relationship of the design code within the neighbourhood plan. I explained that the, net, that the design code was a response to criticism that we got, rather like the long range views analysis at regulation 14, for being not detailed enough, not specific enough, altogether too vague. So uh, he was, Michael Kennedy was happy with that, that we were seeking to boost our evidence base. And so it does sound from both the time frame perspective and from that correspondence that we are really heading towards the first scenario that you outlined, Michael. Um, sorry, yeah. can I can yeah. I just sorry. add a, a little bit of, about about that? I think because um, we we so far we have done extensive, you know. 
a lot, a lot number of um, design neighborhood design code and and the master plan documents already. Um, unfortunately, we I think the the contract or the general approach uh, of what we are doing, we we not been required to um, produce such document to to be used as SPD because that's a, that is a completely different story uh, as as you know and normally the the design code report and the master plan report will be used as part of the evidence base to support your local uh, your uh, neighborhood plan sorry neighborhood plan so before some previous local groups they ask us how we can how they can use the the design code or the master plan I, we the, the answer is as far as we know it's only form part of the um the evidence base and in the neighborhood plan you can refer to this evidence base that that's the function and it, and the design code itself will provide more a detailed measure to ensure the the design quality in the future for any uh, future development that that is how it works that's the function so so it's not really um a political document it's a more design document about the design quality michael do you want to come back in yeah I, I, I think what you described in your response to Michael Kennedy and, and what Wayne's just said is almost the third route that, that, that what's being prepared is an evidence-based document that can then feed into development of policies in the neighbourhood plan, which again is is, is, is perfectly valid. Um, it, it's not one that I've come across, but not one I've got a problem with. Um, I, I, just, I, just, I just think we need some clarity on, on which route we're going down. Because that, obviously this being one of the key things, the dependencies in terms of producing the next draft of the neighbourhood plan. We just need to, we need that clarity in terms of drafting the plan and knowing when we've got the design code ready as, as evidence base. That's yeah, yeah. We we can we can clarify this in the in the document how the future uh, developers and the relevant parties should use this document. Okay. Are you happy with that, Michael? How it is to be used? Um, I, I, I think I think that's my key concern for you that you you, you could commit you know you've commit committed to this piece of work an awful lot could go into it you could, you could have a reasonably detailed design code um, but if it's not followed up in the correct way either through the neighbourhood plan supplementary planning document appendix to the neighbourhood plan it could end up as one of these sort of documents that um looks wonderful says all the right things but is never used oh. you, you need you know what i suppose deep down what i'm saying is whichever route you choose you need to be able to back it up in some way through the planning system as policy yeah we all know that if it's not good you know we all know the typical sort of development managers officers response that um, oh well, that's only an advisory document, and that generally means they ignore it. And you don't want that to happen, do you? Yeah. <clears throat> and and also, I think probably at a later stage when you see more more materials of this report, when it's built build up, uh, you from your end you can also consider how this document can be used in, uh, to support your neighbor plan, and then you can consider how you can achieve that. Because from our end, we, we produce this and how and um, to which position in in the planning system, probably we, from our end, we cannot decide 
you know, you know, do, uh, you know what I mean. Um, we cannot decide which uh, which position this document should be, and probably uh, after you see this document, majority of the part, majority part of the, of this document, you you will you can also uh, start to consider um, this 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 document should be as a appendix of the neighbor plan, one of the policy, or can be uh, it's it can maybe you can consider to to to. Change that into SPD or or whatever. Maybe you can consider that at a later stage. So I'm guessing from you, Michael, that potentially uh, we might have to, in some way, tweak some of our policies to refer to the plan, which would exist as an appendix. Uh, it would be both acting as evidence base that's informing the policy and sort of un underpinning what we're saying about design? Yeah, I think I think it's maybe sort of a, a difference of interpretation of what a design code is. My, my view is a design code is a, is a relatively detailed document that if I'm coming along and wanting to put a dozen houses on a key site in the town centre, I can go to your design code and it's going to tell me broadly what materials are accepting, acceptable, what the sort of proportions of the building I should be looking at, um, how it should relate to the street scene, you know, it should give me a framework that I can use. Um, and now that can happily be an appendix in the plan. Um, it could happily be the evidence base for the policies. But I think we just need that, we just need that clarity really. Um, I, I will, uh, as, as I say, I've, I've, I've certainly used two of the three routes, um, and, and, and the third, using it as evidence base, is, equ is equally valid. Um, I think the only problem with what we said a moment ago about sort of leaving it to a later date is I'm not convinced. Pendle would have the resources to sort of pick it up and do all the consultation and what have you to make the design code supplement a supplementary planning document. And it has to be said that Pendle has already said that in a response to the government that yeah. um, they do not support design codes. Right, well, that, I think that's pretty clear then. If you want this code to carry some weight, you're going to have to do all, make all the running we just decide how we do that. Is it by using it as evidence base, the policies in the plan, is it appendices, or is it some form of standalone document that relates to the plan and has weight? Um, yeah, it's just making one of those choices. I think the standalone is probably the, the, the least preferable of the three. Okay. I think, you know, to be clear to Pendle, they just, in their response, I remember it, it was last year, they just said, we do not have the expertise to do this. It will, it, we do not have the expertise to do this and we cannot do it. So, um, interesting though, that they're now coming with the master plans because that is a bit of blurring of the lines, isn't it, there, I would say. And yeah. it's not a design code, but it's a plan for the towns. We we have done some design code and a must plan for some other uh, local groups, um, and majority of them just uh, form as a part of the evidence, as, as I said already. And sometimes they use the the graphics and some text in in this uh, kind of report, uh, master plan or design code. They copy uh, these into their local plan directly some key um, information they want to deliver. So it's all, you also ca could consider that kind of uh, approach as well. Okay. Could, can I just ask a quick question then? So it sounds like what we're doing is we're producing it as, as an evidence-based document to say, this is what code looks like now these are the types of buildings, the the structures, etc. Yeah. So we've got that as the scene setter. We then have policies which say in these areas, you should do the following in terms of 
sorts of materials or styles, etc. And the design guide adds to that by giving a bit more detail about what those materials are or styles are. So um, it sort of goes, feeds in and then comes back I, out. I, I, I sorry. Um, I think I I make you confuse confused here because my second uh, document only only includes the first part of the report, which is the um, baseline. baseline. Um, <coughs> give me one sec, and I think I should um, I should explain. I should include the the whole documents, which include um, the how how uh, the future um, developers should be aware of design quality as well. And um, sorry, I, let me just uh, structure. Well, that sounds like the right kind of thing because I think it's 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 what Michael was saying. You, if you're a developer, you want to pick something up and say, "Well, go on, then tell me what to do and how to do it." And obviously, Pendle doesn't want to do that because it it threatens viability everywhere, and they always say everything's far too expensive. Um, so, if we give them the guidance, I think that's that, that's definitely the right approach. And, uh, and this um, we want to be used. I'm sharing the screen. Um, let me share. Oh, uh, this, can you, sorry, uh, Kina, can you can you allow me to uh, share my screen? Is that yeah. possible? Our clerk is doing that. It should, says multiple participants can share simultaneously. She's clicked that, so hopefully we could. Okay, see. excellent. It's it's doing that. Uh, let me do that. Um. Sorry, this is this is um, of course it's a still um, in work in progress. It's a it's a far from um, a you know satisfying stage at the moment. And can, can you see my screen first of all? Yes. yes. So so that's that's front cover. Uh, probably I, I, I can explain it better here. Um, so the, the content page you all of you already seen this. Um, so the first one is introduction. Uh, you already know that, the, the background, why? So here, the background we explained here, um, this commission is to provide this document um, and will provide uh, this urban design guidance to help deliver good quality. That, that's the, the general requirement for us um, required by locality. So we provide this uh, document to ensure that good quality can be delivered in the future, uh, which the future developer should use. That, that's it. Um, and the, the planning context, we review, review that uh, different levels and the, how we define the focus area. This is what we're going to do um, you know, uh, um, after I visit the, um, the town of Cohen. Um, and well, based on baseline and the site visit. Um, so I will add these captions later. So understanding the evolution of the town, the wider uh, the wider landscape character area, and the movement, including vehicular and non vehicular, um, and heritage, uh, green belts, open space environment designations, um, water courses, flood zone, etc. So all of this baseline will help any people unfamiliar with the area to have the uh, a high level understanding of, of the cone and the, the neighborhood plan area. And now based on this, we will draw up a character area, uh, which I don't know yet. Generally, we have two groups of character areas, which is belongs to countryside and the uh, settlement area. You will see that later after we develop that. Engagement, of course, will clarify how we um, work together to, not, not for public uh, engagement, just the, between, between us and, and you, uh, the, the process, how we develop these documents together is uh, Etc. And this is part is the, 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 the key actually. This is the key part. This is your design design code. So 
Here we will have a matrix of design code. Uh, this will relate to uh, one, two, three, four, and more, maybe more uh, late, um, categories, which is um, heritage, movement, uh, landscape, and uh, I can't remember uh, <laughs> which one is that, sorry. And some um, flawed, uh, resilient, maybe uh, some other views, etc. And because we already uh, def uh, divide, define the character area, and if for each character area, here, we will list it here, and some character area will relate to a certain design code. So if a developer, he has a site in character, character C, maybe, and then he needs to check, uh, okay, within 20 um, design codes, 18 design codes are, are related to, uh, to his site, so he needs to check that. So this is how, all of our design code matrix work. And then you will see uh, for these, each design code, we will clarify and explain what is that, how the future developer should look at, and this is the actual design code, one, two, three, one, two, three, and supported by the gra graphics or other, other um, you know, materials. So that is uh, heritage, uh, urban structure, build form in details, the block structure on uh, building heights, roof line, um, and you know materials, etc. Oh, I think I uh, already have this this later pages as well. So <laughs> I just uh, explain here. We we do have this actual design code to tell developer in the future what they should look for because. Uh, for example, if they have a site here and that's following following and character, uh, for, sorry, focus area C, and after he check, eighteen design code relate to his site. He, he, he will go back here to check what what the design code um, five four one C uh, talk about, and he needs to check that. So that that is how this design code work. I think ho hope, hopefully I explained a slight better here and the next step. Yeah. Did, did, do you have any question or I can stop share my, my screen? I'm following that. Um, are you happy with that, Michael? Um, yeah, yeah, as I say, I've, I've seen this ACOM approach elsewhere. Um, I, I, I just sort of, whilst that was on, sort of just looking at recent ones that, that we've completed, recent neighbourhood plans, and actually it's pure coincidence and, and it jogged my memory that the last one that we had as a yes vote at referendum, which was last month, they mm. had an ACOM design code um, and... It was used that one. That one was actually a bit of a hybrid of the routes that I was talking about. They used it as evidence based to inform policies in the plan, but then had an overall design policy that <sighs> simply referred to the code and set out how um, those making planning applications should use the code, which I think is very compatible with what we've just heard there. So that's yeah. a that's probably, I'd suggest, what we're going to end up looking at here. Okay. All right. Splendid. Any other questions? No? Okay. All right. Well, I'll see you on the 3rd of August. Um, okay. And happy birthday. Um, <laughs> and um, obviously, we can make arrangements to visit all the areas to make sure that we go to all the different zones within co yeah 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 and and i i think uh, in my i i remember there 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 is a a plan showing the current three character areas i i guess you're looking for not looking for i guess you are expecting a newer version of that yes 
Okay, and I think awesome. possibly there might be more. We were broad brush with our three. Um, you know, we, earlier in this meeting, uh, most of the most of the town centre that you can see visibly is 19th century. But earlier in this meeting, we were talking about some houses that are mm. back to back houses. You know what they are, um, where the, it's a very ancient form of living. You've got people living at the back of your house and you have to go through an arch to reach those houses. Um, they are some of the oldest buildings within the town centre. We've mm. got some sort of courts or yards where there are houses around these little yards that are very yeah. early Victorian, if not even late Georgian and their antecedents. Yeah. So all of that kind of thing, you can't just be so broad brush as say, Cone Town Centre is 19th century because it yeah, isn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, there's all the modern stuff at the top of town. Yeah, th that's good because the uh, local people, um, we know, are always better than us because you leave it there for for such a long time. Um, what I'm thinking is, in in terms of the baseline, particularly the the uh, our, our even our heritage uh, colleagues probably won't catch everything you have because you have much, much, much uh, rich, better knowledge than, than her. And in, in, uh, for the baseline document that I sent over, if you have any comments or have a more detailed information you want to add to, to yeah. that, uh, please well, do, do, do let me know. It will be interesting for her to have a look at our list of non-designated heritage assets, as well as our list of listed buildings, which mm. obviously, um, the list of non-designated heritage assets, as it currently stands, is on our website. And mm. uh, there's a picture of an old man who doesn't have all his fingers pointing at a at a knockdown um, muse for uh, the Peace yeah. Hall, as was then. Um, mm. So if you click on that, then you get that. Sorry, cloth hall. Um, you 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 get that document there, and you can see there's a really big diversity of structures and buildings that are seen to have heritage interest on top of the listed buildings. And there are some areas as well that are in that um, list that I had spoken to the conservation officer at Pendle. And she said that if they had the money, they would probably make them into conservation areas. I'm very much hoping now that Pendle will have a change of heart. Um, there is a, a group across Lancashire that's creating lists of non-designated heritage assets for every single town and village in Pendle. So I'm gutted because I've wasted all this time doing it on my own when in fact the central government could have paid and done the whole lot. But never mind. So um, there is an appetite now to potentially uh, look at some of these conservation area appraisals that are out of date and all of the ones in Kona are over 20 years old and potentially to make, and it might not be the couple that we put forward, but potentially make a couple of new conservation areas for Cone. Um, but they are uh, within our non-designated heritage assets, those areas. One is Keithley Road and one is off Langroyd, and I can't think of the name. Montague, Chatham, yeah, Triangle. So, right, okay, okay. So, okay. <laughs> So she could definitely have a look at that, those documents. And of course, you have my number. If she wants to give me a call and we could have a little canter around all the heritage assets together virtually, if she's not able to visit, then I'm more than happy to, to do that with her. Okay, I'll, I'll ask her whether she is um, available or I need to speak to her anyway. Okay. All right. Splendid. Well, if no one has any more questions for you, and I don't think they do, we'd like to thank you for your contribution. And um, obviously, I'll be seeing you on the third. Happy to speak to um, your heritage colleague whenever she likes um, and try and get that extra detail to her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably she can do a separate visit if you don't mind. I'm okay, sure. no problem at all. Okay, no? okay, I'll speak to her then. Okay. 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 Splendid. Okay, thank you. Happy to, thank nice you so to much. see you, everyone. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye -bye.
Okay. See you later. Bye. Okay. So um, the site viability, that is uh, a grant that we got from ACOM where we have been given two people to work on that. Um, they are just merely starting work. We have, of course, got a, a spreadsheet where we have spoken to all the landowners of all the plots that we were considering. It is quite clear since Regulation 14, and I'm looking at Gina, that some of those plots for different reasons could be to do with flooding or it could be to do with land ownership, uh, cannot go forward to Regulation 15. So we've down selected a smaller group. And uh, unfortunately, the largest group in that list of viabilities that we are still to hear from in terms of how keen the landlord is to move things forward is under one ownership. Gina's trying not to laugh. Um, that one ownership is Pendle Borough Council. Um, I've seen more correspondence where Gina has pushed them um, again. Uh, and I know that she has been ringing John Holton and so on in mitigation to Pendle Borough Council. They have got an unconscionable level of work. They've got new officers. Their planning manager has had to take on a caseload. It's, they are, they've got so much to do. Um, I'm guessing that we aren't top of their list when they are measured in planning applications against times. But I am very hopeful that with the viability work now being undertaken by ACOM, we can at least move forward to whether they want to uh, potentially consider their little land parcels. Alice. I was just wondering which parcels of land we're talking about. Uh, Gina, Gina can give you a list. Yeah, I can send you the spreadsheet, um, Alice, if you want. Um, no I'll do that tomorrow for you. Yeah, it's quite a few, isn't it? Would you say it's six? Yeah. Six? Mm-hmm. To 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 yeah, I mean, Gina had sent the, she, she had sent the spreadsheet as of May. Yes, Gina? Uh, I think it was. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I will, um, I'll send you the final yeah. version that I sent to you. It yeah, hasn't really moved I, since. I, I, I'm hopeless with my emails. Yeah. So yeah. It hasn't really moved since May, and then now we haven't heard from Pendle Council. So we're essentially in a very similar position, but I'm sure she'd be happy to send it to everybody again. And we are chasing, because obviously if we're to get our money's worth from these viability specialists, then we need to know what parcels we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. On a slightly allied note, we are in a better position than we were when we went into Regulation 14. And that's simply because the 298, um, which was uh, the target that was put forward in the core strategy in 2014, has now been held to be out of date. So as a result, we've had to go to, and we don't have an adopted local plan part two. So it seems that our target currently but that's not necessarily the target long term, because as we know, Pendle Council is going towards a local plan part two. We hope that we're ahead of them. But our target currently is 142, which is the updated government methodology. That should put us in a good position in terms of the fact that to be a land allocating plan, we obviously have to allocate land and there's no point allocating land that's going to be instantly developed because if we do that then we're no longer an allocating plan so we do need to allocate some land and i think we are in a position to do so uh liz hello you're not putting your hand up you're just waving at me generally <laughs> michael um yeah, I, th I, th I think, again, this is a sort of key piece of information that we're dependent on because Pendle's Regulation 14 comments were very much that the housing policy, CNDP6, doesn't meet the basic conditions because none of the sites are viable. Um, and I think that's quite a sort of strong point that we have to try and address and... Clearly, that's the reason for this commission. Um, so I, th I, th I think the, the most important thing for me is, is again, is a bit like the design work, it's time scale. Yeah. 
Well, I'll try. It's been a long time, hasn't it, Gina? We've been we've been sort of past and pillars supposed to bit with this. We started off with J Dave Chapman. I've forgotten the name of the, the current chap, and now they say they're working together on it. Um, I can give them a call tomorrow and try and press them along a bit. My understanding is that this is very important and a change from when we previously had ACOM viability because that viability was entirely down to how much it costs to build, how much the land costs and how much each unit would, would generate and therefore was it profitable or was it not. Um, this team appear to be looking at more esoteric uh, measures such as could uh, could Nelson Cone College students be used? Could people be employed and therefore train so that they have long-term jobs? Could the town centre benefit from people living on the doorstep? Um, certainly some of our more marginal sites, and remember it's not just what's viable now, it's what's viable in the lifetime of the plan, and we know that currently, anyway, there's a rising housing market that has changed quite significantly since we had our last viability assessment done in 2018. Um, so we hope that perhaps some of these more esoteric, uh, non-tangible non uh, values placed on these land parcels might get some of the previously, not necessarily high chrome works, but some of the previously unviable land over the line for us. And the fact that our lower housing target means that we don't necessarily have to have quite as many different sites as we felt we needed before. If you remember when the local plan part two was out for consultation, they said that under those targets, if every single housing application that we had passed in Cone was to be built, our target for the next nine years would be one. Now, obviously, not every single application that we have passed in Cone will be built, and we cannot rely on it, and no inspector would rely on it either. But my point is, surely, now the, uh, the annual target has changed, some of that pressure for us diminishes. The, the pressure diminishes. Um, I, th I, th I think the key issue still remains that we could be submitting a neighbourhood plan that Pendle Council have a fundamental objection with um, and, and, and then become uncomfortable about proceeding to the next stage which is the submission consultation. Um, I, I, I think what we have to do is, yes, have the updated viability assessment and hopefully it comes out with a, you know, slightly different result. I think secondly, um, what we also have to do is address the point about availability um, which obviously you're on with, um, but then again, on the the deliverability, it's not just about immediately being deliverable. Um, some of those sites have to be deliverable not in the next five years, but over the plan period. Yes, is, you know. So yeah, there, there's an argument to be made there. But it would be nice to have this information, the viability information, as, as, as quickly as we can. I agree. And obviously, if we have the viability information, or we feel that we're nearly there with the viability information, and Gina and I have put a lot of work in to get to that spreadsheet position so that we have our dam selected sites apart from the pendle ones which are sitting separately. Um, then, once that work is done, we can move on to that MOT checklist that proves that we meet all those basic uh, sort of policies for neighbourhood planning. Yes? I'm sorry, I, 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 
I assume you're expecting a response? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's where we're up to. I will chase can them. I, can I just add it on viability yeah. as well? As, as the work you've been doing on things like levelling up funds and whatever. Yes. The thing that Pendle objected to was the fact they said that, as you say, n none were viable. No. Unless they were done via other mechanisms with together housing or other yeah. sorts of housing bodies. Or whatever. Housing and, and I think I think it's a little artificial of them just to say, thou shalt not rely on that ever, because clearly we do lots of that in the area. Um, so some... Or, one or two out of our six will be viable on their own two feet. Yes. Uh, several may be viable as a together housing type approach, and others may be viable with a bit more creative government funding. Yes. So I think we've got several legs we can land on there. And, and, and that's, that's what the locality people said. They actually said there would be different solutions for different sites. So they wouldn't be all the same solution at all. And we do know that we do have, certainly in the lifetime of the plan, a couple of viable sites um, and our target is diminished so I think we are in a better position than we were last year when all was gloom okay so moving on um, item 12 work to be completed some of, some of this is still me because I still have things to do with regard to the list of non-designated heritage assets. Sadly, I'm striking things off it um, as planning applications come forward and see some of those heritage assets demolished or ruined forever. Um, try not to be too sad about that. We still have an awful lot of them. But one thing that David said that the rest of you could really help us with is a really boring job, which is one of the things that came at Regulation 14 was that we need addresses and postcodes for every single one of those heritage assets. And it would really help us if other people could do this for us. That would allow me to focus on just doing the descriptions of the four or five new ones that we now need that, that were raised in the Regulation 14 consultation. Can I have volunteers to split a bit of this work? Alice? Brian? Jerry? Oh, this is marvellous. And Liz? Oh, brilliant. So that means that you probably only have about... Would you offering to? You only have about 10 or 12 to do each to find the address and the postcode, and that is a marvellous... Did, did, did Claire also want them idea on, on a map? Did she want them on a map? Yeah, so it's, 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 you've, got, you've got something, like the Mooney. Right. It's a case of, you know, it's Albert Road, blah, 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 whatever postcode we can find. Okay. And then it's a case of, here's a Google map with a, with a pin on it. Okay. So now, it's that sort of combination of things. I think, I think I'm at. looking at Gina. I think, really, when we've got all the addresses for every single one and we must have the addresses for quite a few because you wrote to them didn't you oh 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 Go on, Gina. Uh, yes we have got some of them um so um what i'll do is um get a final list together of the ones that we haven't got marvelous can... you might only have then half a dozen each which would just be um a wonderful help and then I think when we've got all the addresses, we need somebody to plot all the addresses on a map. I don't know whether that person is you or it's just surely just one of those sort of, oh, Liz has got a hand up. Go on, Liz. Oh, oh. <laughs> ah, hello. I was just going to say I'll do that if you want. Ah. Splendid. That's I, I am. I am so grateful. It's one of those things that, and you would take me days to do to do all of them. And I suppose it would put me off writing the four or five that are new. Um, it won't take me that long to to write those. I'll I'll go along. And there are a couple of heritage streets to do as well. Um, so that needs to be done. But I actually think that was. Where are we up to with policies, Michael? I know that Claire rewrote some policies and that Jonathan and, and Alice helped provide mapping for the fast food uh, takeaway policy that was being rewritten. And I knew that there were some other policies that were just being tweaked in line with the NPPF 
update? Yeah, it's still very much a work in progress. Um, you know, bits of the plan are more complete than others. In, in terms of the design, I think we're still, because we're waiting on the design code. Um, lost my notes now. So sort of one, three, five, fifteen, and sixteen really need the sort of the design code work. Um, I think this, the the key thing for me that still makes this all hang together is uh, other housing sites. I think until we're clear, really clear on that, it, I, I just think it's difficult to 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 bring the whole document together as a whole. Okay. Um, if 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 I was going through things again uh, today, I, I do wonder whether, in terms of sort of bringing that together, whether it would be worth just a small group of us sort of meeting outside this meeting at some point to sort of pull together all the various information that we've got in terms of um, availability. Um, and, uh, and 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 all the the rest of the evidence base, so we can finalise that short list of sites. Um, maybe address some of the outstanding questions from Pendle, although I'm not convinced there are that many. Again, I went through that this afternoon. Um, but I do think the housing is is the key one. I think we, we do have the short list. I mean, you know, on that spreadsheet that Gina did. It clearly shows what the shortlist is, minus the half dozen or so that are pendles. So we continue to push pendle because some of those sites, to me at least, are <clears throat> not only viable, but also um, very good from a regeneration perspective. Perhaps not all, but certainly some. And then obviously there is the leveling up fund so it is possible that some of the ones that are less viable still could be used as part of Lancashire County Council's Brownfield Leveling Up Fund. And um, County Councillor Sutcliffe was speaking to me about that on Saturday. So I think it's looking again at what we have the shortlist. If we're moving Pendle to one side, we do have that shortlist. It does exist. And it's a matter of presenting that to the locality people for them to look at the cocktail of measures mm. that some of the less viable sites may need. Yeah, I, 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 I just, I, I just think the housing is so central to the whole document, and uh, and I, it, it does worry me that 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 we do need to get that right, and there are so many strands of the evidence base. So, you know, not to be sort of disrespectful or downplay some of the other things, um, you know, that, that they can almost sort of, those parts of the plan as they have been can be revised now. They're not really going to change. No. Um, but, it, it, you know, it, 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 it sort of, as I say, we, we seem to, we, we, to, to my mind, we, we're dependent on, certainly at our end, on three key documents, one of which the landscape was we've talked about earlier this evening, and that looks as though it's, um, you know, that's going to be ready fairly soon. Um, the viability and the design, I, I think, sound as though they're a little way off at the minute. Yeah, I agree, I agree. It's been slower than we would have wished. It's not in our control. It's down to other people who are, frankly, giving us stuff for free. And when you're not paying somebody, we are paying the long range views lady and she's done the fastest, <laughs> you're laughing at me, but she, she's done oh. the fastest thing. We, we set her a deadline. We can't set people who, who are doing things for free a deadline because they'd probably tell us to go and boil our heads in buckets or something. I, th I think the alternative is to say, okay, we know we've got these dependencies um but nevertheless let's press on knock the document into the shape that we want um and then see how that is backed up by the evidence and does that then generate some further changes um i think 
you know, we, we've probably said this many times before, haven't we? With, with the housing, it's probably not really going to change very much because at the end of the day, you are limited by your geography. You cannot miraculously pull some more viable sites out of a hat. hat. It's just not physically possible. So the viability is, you know, it almost becomes a given. It's not a case then of saying these things are not viable. It's a case of, and David's already mentioned this, how do we make them viable over the medium to long term? And by all accounts, there are ways and means, not for all the sites, but for a good enough number of the sites. And I think that's where we have to go with this, really. Well, again, I think if that's the case, I, I, I think we probably need to sort of start thinking about how we think that, that, you know, how that would be achieved for each site. Um, I'd, well, that's really what the locality people are doing. They're mm, coming up with this cocktail of different ways. Well, that's what they say for each site. Well, if that's what they are doing, we do need that as quickly as we can get it, really, don't we? I will try politely to tiffy them along as much as I possibly can tomorrow. But Gina and I have been in weekly, more than weekly, correspondence with them. And they seem slightly laggardly. And we've, we keep using words like eager, don't we, Gina? Yes. Keen. We're very keen. And, and occasionally I'll ring the chap up and he's, sometimes he'll take my calls. Um, so I'll do my very best. But I'm aware that we're not paying them. And I think that probably is at bottom, really, of it. So, OK, any other thoughts about uh, work to be completed before submission? The only other one I had was the, um, the MOT checklist with locality. I think one of the things we said was it, it's almost worth inquiring, is it, as to whether there's any availability now, even though we're not ready? Just in case, you know, they say, well, let's hear where we get we to. We've got a slot the... in a month or two months or three yeah. months, you know. Let's hear where we get to with the viability people first, really. Well, I think. yeah. Because, you know, it is central. There's no question about it. It is central. Alice? Uh, I was just wondering, as well as the availability, uh, viability, um, CNDP7, that policy does, is not considered as um, meeting the basic conditions. And I was just wondering how we're going to square that circle of... Okay. Now, I don't have it in front of me. Oh, it's Hello. it's all about um, green spaces and the fact that some of them are considered to be large tracts of land. Mm. And obviously, we're disagreeing with some of these things. Yeah. But if Pendle are saying they are, mm. and we're saying they're not mm. well it's ultimately a, it's a tricky situation and how will we ultimately it does come down to the planning inspector yeah. and you know i have looked into this i've been on all these webinars with locality and it seems to me that pendle is taking a very narrow view there is no number of acres or hectares that that specifies what is uh, an extensive tract of land paragraph 100 is open to interpretation in one of the most recent um, uh, neighbourhood plans, I was astounded to find that a private school that has woodland of something like 12 acres open to the public occasionally is a valued green space. And that was passed by that planning inspector. Now, it might not have been passed by another planning inspector. Yes, go on, Alice. Um, I in that respect, you know, I put forward Gib oh. Hill and it was not that because it was a large tract of land. And then in the comments, lots of people said, please keep Gib Hill in uh, as a protected space um, because it's not a large tract of land. So it's, it is yeah. a little bit tricky it is. that we've said one is and one isn't, and we've decided on something. Well, no, we, we left it in the hands of Claire when she was um, in the position uh, of Michael to remeasure it and do that analysis. And we left it in her hands then, if you remember, back in 
February time. But now we're leaving it in the hands of Pendle for another We're absolutely not leaving it in the hands of Pendle. So, if we were leaving it in the hands of Pendle, we wouldn't be sitting here now. Um, we're, we're hoping to get to a position whereby we can get that MOT checklist done by locality so that it can move forward to Regulation 15 and be looked at by a planning inspector. And it's down to the planning inspector, really, as to whether it meets the basic conditions. So we could have we could have put Gibb well, Hill in and it could have been knocked back. Well, Michael's got his yeah, hand up. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Claire, Claire re-measured all the sides and, uh, and Gibb Hill was, was 62 hectares. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not downplaying its, you know, significance as a, as a, as an, air, as an open area. But I, th I, th I think on the, the government's definition, um, there's no local green space de being designated anywhere in the country that's even the remote way of that size. Michael, was that um, the cone end or was that the entire area um as, as far as aware that's that's the area that was put forward for designation so so the it's the whole area to me but yes but we did ask her to look very very closely into it well if she used the whole area then perhaps we need to reassess that i think even half of it would be too big and it's, it's relative, actually. Cone is helped here because it is relative to the size of the settlement. I.e., if you're Lanesha Bridge and you're hoping to designate a green space, that green space will be smaller because Lanesha Bridge is smaller. And Cone is bigger, so Cone can therefore, relative to the size of the town, have potentially, this is how I understand it, and I went on a webinar on this, uh, have a, a larger green space. But... We did ask Claire to look into this very... She's not here, unfortunately. We could we could ask her all of this. Um, Michael didn't do this work. We asked her to take that view, and she took that view, uh, because she said to us at the time, we don't want our plan to fail because we've put something in that we know will make it fail. Um, yeah. And that's what she warned us with. And unfortunately, certain things in the plan has been said to fail because of exactly the same thing that Claire is saying and that's that's the problem I think I think the difference yeah. here is the person or the people which is Wellux that we are employing as a town council to give us professional advice you've got to remember that Wellux or Kirkwells sorry this is Michael Wellux Kirkwells, <laughs> Kirkwells have done dozens and dozens of neighborhood plans and Pendle Council has done two, I think two, two, yeah, small. two small plans and only one designating plan, which was Trawden. So we have decided that we will take this professional advice. I have become a neighbourhood planning champion and I go to all of these, the latest plans that are made, all the analysis of what passes or what doesn't or what struggles or what doesn't. And we can only do our best for Cone. But Cone will be one of the biggest neighbourhood plans if it's made. Um, so we decided that Kirkwells are the people who've done the most plans and we're going off their advice. Could I mention another issue? I know I probably... Sorry, these items are future agendas. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Well, Alice, would you like to put this on the future agenda? Yes, please. And could I also put Essex Street on the future agenda? And also... Um, What's Essex Street? Essex Street is the area that um, in the... It's um, in the area that um, one person said it should be as a protected space okay yeah in the consultation okay and then um pendle got back to us and said that the northern part is open space right. so there seems to be a mismatch yes, there as is. to why no, we've there, decided that there it absolutely shouldn't go is. In. we took advice and we took advice from 
Michael initially, and these things, uh, as far as I understand it, change, that you shouldn't double designate. Because if it's a thing already, then you shouldn't also make it another thing, because that's belt and braces and not necessary. But then locality appear to have changed their minds, and they're saying you should double designate. Because if you say it's a thing, and then somebody else says it's another slightly different thing, but the other person that you don't control then changes that designation, and you haven't designated, then the thing itself is neither. And so we received the advice that actually we should double designate because it's our neighborhood plan and all throughout Pendle's uh, response they're saying oh it's already this or it's already that but that's in their plan and not in our plan so that's how i understand it michael so why is essex street not in because it's in the consultation somebody's actually asked for it to go in and it's also oh sorry yeah yeah Future Go on, Michael. Yeah, I think I, th I think we need to remember that national planning gap, nas the national planning policy framework, paragraphs 99, 100, and 101, are very clear in terms of how local green space designation should be used. Um, and to character, you know, to sort of um, paraphrase that, I, I, I think what it's basically saying is this designation should be used sparingly. It's not not to be used for every single piece of open space. It's for things that are um, special to a, to a local community. But then there are parameters applied to that, and one of them is. That these are not extensive tracts of open land. So that does imply, although there's nothing in policy and there's nothing in guidance to say what that limit is, but it does imply there's a size limit to such sites. Yeah, I mean, Essex Street that Alex is talking about and we'll come to the next agenda isn't actually uh, remotely an, an extensive tract of land. It's not remotely. No, but I think that was going back to my first point that local yeah. green space designation is not suitable for every little Everything. bit of open space that you know that that we can identify yeah um so we're looking at demonstrably special here yeah um yeah. indeed indeed we've worked on neighbor plans that have tried that approach to identify every single little bit of open space we have as local green space and examiners frown on that as well okay and they, and they basically say Make your mind up. You can't have them all. Which ones do you want? And I think, you know, I would argue that what we have recommended to you and what you've worked up is a reasonable list. Um, and what I'd also say is, given the comments of Pendle, give or take, if, give or take a couple of exceptions, and this issue of doubling up they've given a reasonable response to that list as well okay there are you know i absolutely sorry i did think they would come back a lot harder on that okay all right well they thank really you for that. With, with one oh i think you've been muted by by naomi um she, oh, okay, she's, she's claiming she hasn't touched you. Um, so uh, I know that we're up against it time-wise, and she's giving me frantic looks from behind the screen. Um, so if that's the only thing that's going to go on next month's agenda that's extra, obviously all of these reports and everything we've discussed so far will be going on next month's agenda. Um, so if we're happy with that... Um, Gina will send us the date and time of the next meeting, which will be um, early middle of next month. Um, and hopefully we've got somewhere with Pendle at that point. That would be brilliant. And if we've got somewhere with the design guide, that if that visit, that visit shall have happened. And also with the viability, we'll be feeling a lot happier. And we'll know the, the addresses and perhaps even plotted on the map 
all of the designated heritage assets. So hopefully we'll be feeling in a more complete place. But thank you very much. And thank you, Richard, for your tenacity in staying through the whole meeting. Most impressive. And uh, goodbye. Thank you, Jean.